everybody guess what we're back this afternoon so this is so exciting to me to talk about a new film coming out mags and julie go on a road trip and let me tell you we all need a road trip about now like we need to get out of that oh yeah <laughs> we were just talking about moms and like being at home so i'm excited to learn more about this i've got ryan and elizabeth with me how's it going today good good so nice to be here yeah. yeah. Okay. So who wants to tell me what exactly is Mags and Julie all about? I saw a little clip of it. It looks pretty funny, which I feel like we all need something funny and light right now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. More than ever. Right. Right. Yeah. It's a very straightforward uh, comedy. It's a like a buddy movie. It's about two best friends. Uh, who haven't really seen much of each other because my character Mags does a lot of working and doesn't lot, do a lot of hanging. Uh, Elizabeth's character um, <laughs> is very bohemian. She's got her life together. She's a very positive person. She's married to a wonderful man. Um, and basically Julie says to her, let's go see this cabin that your grandfather left for you in this will. Uh, let's head north and go on this road trip and go, you know, get you some time off. But it doesn't really go as planned. <laughs> yeah, I saw a little bit of it. Yeah, there looks like some little antics that happen along the way there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I wanted to write something that was kind of like the Mission Impossible of comedy. Oh. Um, <laughs> you know, like Mission Impossible, you watch that movie and it just doesn't let up, right? It's just... Right thing after another after another and you're like I can't believe this movie right so I thought that would be really funny to apply to comedy so that's what we did you know okay so I only got to see a little bit of it but is there a little bit of Lucy and Ethel in this yes <laughs> am, I, sure. am I right am I on the right track here I think you are <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of I Love Lucy. I watched it growing up. I was just saying to somebody else, I didn't have cable. I had like basic <laughs> channels when I was growing up. So Damn. I grew up with Green Acres, Leave It to Beaver. Uh, I love what, what I Dream of Jeannie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I Dream of Jeannie. I used, yeah, I went to Leave It to Beaver. I Love Lucy. And um, what's the one? The Andy Griffith show? I used to watch yeah. a lot. Oh. Yeah. I think we could do a whole other set uh, interview here and just talk about all the whole classics we used to watch on TV. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, stuff with heart, stuff with a moral fiber. I don't know. And yeah. then, Julie's a little bit like that. You know, it's um, it's definitely got some lessons in it. Um, it's a very positive film and it's uplifting. So, which, like I said earlier, is something that we all need right now i feel like you know i feel like some people are you know dogging or kind of putting down some of those films that are out right now that come out this time of year you know what i'm talking about and some of those yeah. other and because they're like they're so predictable but i'm all for it that's all what's on my channels right now i'm all for streaming anything that's very predictable and makes you laugh yes i'm the same and way it's well it's funny that i traditionally i like I personally enjoy stuff that's kind of edgy, or I think that I do. In my mind, I'm like, oh, give me that edgy, strange stuff. But then what I really watch after a long day, after a hard day, after a hard year, I mean, this year has been so challenging as you know, we were talking before this in so many ways. Right. You do, you want something that just feels like home. You want something that you can, you know, eat your dinner <laughs> and relax. And I think Mag and Jules, it's it's so entertaining and there's so much heart to it. And I think there's so much love in the film in terms of, you know, friendships and relationships and how people really are and, and challenges that friends really face that are real um, and not overly dramatic or overdone, but also so many lovely characters that you really fall in love with. So yeah, I agree. It's just, it's got a nice amount of challenge that is accurate you know, to what you face in real life while also really filling you up with like, you know, these two friends who really love each other, which yeah. we all, you know, we all run into those things and the difficulties and challenges of that partnership. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where was this filmed? Can you tell me about that? It, well, it was filmed entirely in my home state. I grew up in Wisconsin. 
Um, and I like the challenge of going back to my home state and shooting a feature film there. So that's where we shot it. So every location is a real location. <laughs> it's, it's all, it's all Wisconsin. Um, it's awesome. Yeah, and all the characters in it, all the other actors, you know, they have Wisconsin accents and um, it's just, yeah. It was so much fun for me because I've never I'm you know live in Nashville Tennessee um, and right. I'm in California, so I was it. Oh my gosh, Wisconsin's so beautiful. I was so excited to be there. There's this one scene that we shot. I mean, every scene that we shot is essentially outdoors except for things in a cabin. But there's one scene that we shot in this field, and there's all this milkwood and monarch butterflies just everywhere flying all over the place and so i remember you know i had a little we had our home base um there was a house by the cabin that we shot in and you could go down this road and i was very obsessed with riding <laughs> ryan knows this with riding my bike <laughs> there was a bike and i was like i just need to ride my bike so you know when i take breaks it's my little time so like so you would ride your bike down this path and there was you know, a pond and ducks and frogs and sometimes raccoons would cross the road. And I remember riding my little bicycle and all these butterflies were just flying all around. Everything, the air smelled like magic. I mean, it was... <laughs> Can we bottle that? I need some magic air right now. I think it would be a great Christmas mm -hmm. gift. We could, we could do something with that. It's yeah. a right, it's a good candle scent. Honestly, like someone should make a candle scent out of it, like milk thistle or milkweed or whatever it's called, yeah. with like a whisper of a monarch butterfly wing. And you know, I'm gonna buy it just based on how you're describing it. So whatever it is, just send it to me. I've got it. I'm gonna start it <laughs> with like a little bit of like, uh, like foam from what is it, the Michigan River or the Great Lake Lakes? Michigan. Yeah, yeah, Lake Michigan. Just like a whisper of like sand. <laughs> kind of sprinkling of sunset. Sorry, guys. I'm really. It is funny though. You're talking about it, and it really was kind of ideal to shoot yeah. a movie, you know, and like with everything that we've gone through in this last year, it would be like really nice to be shooting the movie again. I know. <laughs> Even with the cabin, the cabin, like by itself. I mean, Ryan, I feel like you should speak on. It, it was crazy how much, you know, because Ryan had, we'd been, she had written the script and then we'd been rehearsing it. And so I was sort of like along for the ride in terms of observing the developing process kind of unfold. And I was amazed. She had written the description of this cabin. And I'm not going to say everything because, you know, Ryan, I'll leave it up to you as to what we're going to give away and what we're not. But the description that she wrote as a writer of this cabin and then this cabin that she happened to find for the location, it was, you couldn't, I didn't even know that cabins like this existed. It, I, you could not. And it was just the cabin that she happened to kind of, that fell into her lap was exactly to the letter what was written in the script. And it was a very specific cabin. It's not like... The cabin in the woods is the only <laughs> cabin in the woods that I've ever seen. Yeah, it happened a lot, you know, like yeah. when I was looking for locations and stuff, I would, I would, I would come upon the thing that I had written down in the script, and it was yeah. like, wow, this is this is really interesting. But <laughs> yeah. that cabin was like covered in dead animals. It yeah. was, I mean, it was the cabin was more dead animal than it was cabin. <laughs> oh, so that was true. So it was real life. Yeah. Was a dead animal. Yeah, the guy that owns the cabin's an actual hunter. So yeah. he had oh. taxidermy and everything. And that's what it was. That's what was written in the script. So yeah. I remember, we were so I was like, oh my gosh, this is yeah. Like, There's a scene in the trailer. Oh, didn't have power. We didn't have power. Yeah, it didn't have power. There wasn't any power. There wasn't any running water. Like it was. Very real. I remember the scene in the that you see in the preview where I'm laying on the floor and I startle up and I go, find a weapon. Yeah. When I was laying on the floor right before I get up, there's a mouse <laughs> in the cat. And I remember just laying there, like getting ready for them to call action. And this little <laughs> mouse is like running around underneath this thing. And I, you know, you don't know if a wild mouse is going to come eat your face. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Like, yeah, I don't know these Wisconsin yeah. nights. You know, like they're—I don't know how gentrified they are. So 
it was really funny. I have to say, as a director, I was like, Elizabeth, just focus. <laughs> Let me have to get this scene done. You just need to focus. <laughs> just let it go. Let it be. It's fine. It's staying in the dark. We just have to keep going. No, I was all, it's funny, like the, our dynamic, I feel like our dynamic is like you and me is, was similar. I mean, and you know, I mean, you cast me. So it's like, obviously you knew what I had inside of me, but I don't know if I knew what I had inside of me until I got there. And I really was the one who was like, I'm going to ride my bike and like make a candle out of butterflies. <laughs> and you're like, let's shoot the scene. <laughs> so this is a little bit of real life uh, rolling over into the movie then, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, so funny how that is. Tell me about the most of the cast is females, which I love that uh, females get a chance to shine and they're not all 16 and, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think, I mean, Elizabeth knows a little bit of this story, but for me, I, I got sick of seeing comedy that was written by men for, for women, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I would be like, I'd watch a movie and I'd be like, a woman wouldn't say that. A woman <laughs> wouldn't say that. That's not funny to women. Women yeah. don't find that funny. And then, you know, the credits would roll. I'd be like, oh, a man wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, so it's. I think it's good to have something that's a little bit more of a female perspective. Um, you know, and also as women, we're kinder to each other. And, you know, I mean, I didn't, you know, when I saw Elizabeth and I look at myself, we're not Barbie dolls. We're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. We're real women. Yeah. It's nice to hire people and have people part of a story based on their merit and their talent, um, you know, not based on other things. And I think, again, that's something that women bring to the filmmaking world, which is a bit lacking, you know? Yeah. Right. right. So important. I mean, you know, everybody says, you know, in many different spectrums that representation matters. And so it's just nice to see, it is. It's nice to see women that that look like you and that just look like real women. I know that, you know, there's many comedies that I've seen and written by women and for women where I see women and I'm like, oh, like they're like this woman's in her 30s or she's maybe even in her 40s. And like you said, not 16 and no shade. I mean, if you're right. if you're gorgeous and talented and funny, like kudos to you. You know what I mean? But right. I think it's nice to be able to, and I think that people want to see and experience people who don't look perfect because we just right. don't all look and act perfect all the time. And I think, right. again, that's one thing that's really cool about the female perspective and the female narrative is the ability, the way that we, be, I think about this a lot, the way that women behave and the jokes that we tell and the things that are real to us when we're hanging out with each other and it's a girl's night, mm -hmm. um, it's a different perspective than what's going on in, in other spheres. And it doesn't invalidate any of those, you know what I mean? There's humor that's universally funny. There's humor, everything can be funny and everything has its place, but it is nice for this to have its place, I think, you know? Yeah, totally agree. I, yeah. I just wanted you to know, I picked up on that. And so thank you for representing yeah. women, all women. Yeah, absolutely. You're very welcome. <laughs> Uh, tell me one thing that people should know about this because I know they can pre-order it. It's coming out the week of Thanksgiving. Yeah. That's right. Well, you can pre-order it right now. And we're trying to push that as much as we can because the more pre-orders that happen, uh, the wider it goes out to people. Yeah. So on iTunes, like they have that carousel, right? And you go to that the homepage and all these movies are there. And there's that little section that says new and noteworthy, that kind of thing. Right. The more you want to be new and no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, but they'll actually highlight your movie, which is really cool. Um, and then it goes out so they'll say, okay, we'll show it to this many more people, we'll show it to this many more people. So the more people that are interested in it and pre ordering it, it's kind of like an opening weekend, you know, like the opening weekend for a movie, the more people that show up for that opening weekend means the more theaters will pick up that film and share it, right? Yeah. So, right similar kind of thing, but it comes out wide on all VOD platforms on Thanksgiving. Um, but yeah, so that's where you can find it. Yeah. And speaking of movie theaters, most of those have closed there or there are very limited showings right now. Yeah. So I think yeah. this is the choice for most people is to try to download and watch something on demand right now. And it's perfect. <laughs> and it's, a great, it's a great holiday movie. It's a great like Friendsgiving, like people talk about Friendsgiving, you know, 
Yeah. I mean, I hope people get together this Thanksgiving. I think it would be a good thing. I know we all miss each other. Yeah. But it's a great, like I've had a few people tag their best friends and say, we're getting this movie. We're going to watch it together. And I thought, you know, that's a really cool thing to do. So, you know, Friendsgiving. Yeah. Friendsgiving, a girlfriend night out or night in, I guess I should say. <laughs> exactly. Of watching this. Yeah. Hey, it's great to catch up with you guys. I can't wait to see the entire thing. I haven't seen it all yet, but what us all, I gotta let you guys know. It's funny. You're gonna love it. I think it'll be something that uh, you will probably put on repeat. Yeah, yeah, agree. Well, Elizabeth, great to see you. I know you're in Nashville. Oh, before we go, I just yeah. realized you have a special talent that you can wrap Dr. Seuss books. Oh, oh I can. <laughs> I, I wish like, I could wrap Dr. Seuss books. Um, I can wrap other things that, that should never go live. Okay. Um, <laughs> that, that's Wes, Wes Tank. Oh, oh Wes does that. Wes oh. Tank. Wes no. wrapping. It's funny that you say that because yes, Elizabeth's got talents. So I do. I well, and I can rap. It's just that when I grew up, um, gangsta, I was real. I thought that I was cool because I listened to a lot of gang. I was like the thirteen-year-old who listened to gangster rap, and it made me feel like I was a lot cooler than I was because I was just this nerdy kid. So all of the songs that I can rap really well, I, I should never rap on this live. Oh, <laughs> but right. I, I can rap. I can rap. Okay. I know. <laughs> But Dr. Seuss is a really good idea. I gotta go look that one up. I've heard oh, he's so that. good. He's Wes is he's he plays Ryan's boss and he's yeah. just a gem. Yeah. He's a wonderful gem of a human. He's so funny in our movie. And he does, he does this whole story raps thing that's just kids for kids. It's amazing. It's I get very excited about it. All right. Well, something else to look forward to. All yeah. right. Great seeing you guys. You guys go check it out. Mags and Julie go on a road trip. Go on a road trip. Can't talk. <laughs> Giving day. All right. See Yay. you. Guys. Thank you Bye, so much, everybody. Bye. Bye.